Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the celebration of life, Susan Goldstone. Before we begin, uh, we are really overwhelmed by the outpouring of laughter here this evening. And for those who wish, they can scan the QR code at the front of the church to be able to download the program onto their phone. Let's all stand for the first and opening song, which is going to be As the Dare. Ah! 
Please be seated. Mr. Peter Goldstein and other members of the Reed family, Dr. Peter Swaby, fellow member of the clergy, ministers of government, members of the diplomatic corps, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered here today to celebrate the life of Susan Fox Goldstein. Susan was a devoted wife, an extraordinary mother, a wonderful daughter and sister, an exemplary child of God, and she found time to be a stellar professional, an outstanding lecturer, and a caring mentor. She juggled many responsibilities with, with a smile and with grace. I remember the first time I met Susan. Now, when I grew up in Montego Bay, I know that she lived close by, but I did not meet her until I came to Kingston. So my life was robbed of that time of knowing such a special person for many years. When I first met her, I remember she needed to print a document, and she lived nearby. And she came with Alex on her hip. And Alex, if you recall, was a very big baby on the hip of this small lady. It almost seemed like his legs were dragging on the ground. And she needed to print a document, I believe it was for school, a very important document. And even though there was a press for a deadline, she still was smiling. She still had such grace, even in the, the, the presence of, in the midst of stress. And I don't think I ever since that day till now, ever saw her without a smile on her face. She was profusely grateful for any kind of gift or kindness shown to her, and she paid it forward to everyone with whom she, and who, with whom she came in contact. The message of the gospel tells us that God's kindness to us is without merit. It is with grace. It is because of God's love. And that message that Susan heard had a profound impact on her life. She lived for Christ from that day when she heard of the gospel and she made it her primary goal in life to glorify the Lord in whatever she was doing. She threaded scripture in her lectures and it was clear to all that Christ was her foundation. She made a meaningful impact on many lives. She touched many lives, those of whom are here today can testify, many of whom are here today can testify that she was an outstanding woman and once you met her, she made a difference to your life. We are here today to celebrate her life, to say our oh, farewell, but it is my hope that her memory will continue, that we ourselves will pay it forward, that we who have been touched by this special woman will decide that we are going to be like her in our life. That we are going to wear smiles on our faces no matter how much sweat we are in. That we are going to ensure that we can juggle all our respons responsibilities with the kind of grace that Christ gives us. And that we will make sure that Christ is our foundation as well. Susan has made a huge impact on our life, and we are grateful to have known her. We can only imagine to her family the loss that they feel. And on behalf of the King Church of Christ, I'd like to personally offer my sincere condolences to all of you. We know that she was very special to us. Thank you so much for bringing such a special person into the world and being a part of her early life to make her who she was. We've been praying for you constantly, praying that God will, in your loss, comfort you with the comfort only he can give. At this time, I'm going to ask all of us at this moment to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Father in Heaven, Paul the Apostle, who represented you to a Gentile population of the world in his day, called you the God of all comfort. And Father, we need to know you in this way today, so we ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to come to comfort the breathing heart. Remind us of your promises, and those that Jesus made to us, Father, about the rewards for the faithful. We know, Lord, that Susan put our hope in you, 
And therefore we have reason to celebrate because you do not disappoint. In you, the answer is always yes. May the face that we have today, the face that Susan had, be reflected in this service. And that we will honor you by celebrating your promises today. We look forward to the day that we will see each other when Jesus returns. And we look forward to seeing Susan again in this in the new form, Father, that you will give to all of us. You impart life. You imparted life at the very beginning, and you continue to impart life. You hold the, the keys of Hades, Father. And we believe and know that Jesus will do as he has promised and will raise the dead on the day that he comes. Therefore, today we can celebrate. Until Jesus returns, grant Susan peaceful rest, along with all the saints who have gone on ahead. May her reward be great. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first reading is going to be taken from Psalm 116, verses 12 to 15, and Philippians 3, verse 7 to 11, and that will be done by Mr. Eugene Anthony Fuchs, Susan's brother. What shall I remember unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the, the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of all his saints. But what things were gain to me those I counted lost for Christ? Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, but count them but dung that I may win Christ. And he found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the face of faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the singing of the hymn, The Lord is My Shepherd. Oh, 
preparest a table in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Ye shall be good. Follow me, and I will dwell in God's house forevermore. And I will dwell, and I will dwell, and I will dwell in God's house forevermore. second reading will be taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, and will be done by Sharon Abrahams and Michelle Butler, Susan Sisters. While my sister is coming, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and celebrating my sister. A special regard to Peter and the boys, three sons, who are stellar products of Suzanne's love, Suzanne's care. Thank you all for your love and care. And on behalf of my mother, I wish you all God's blessings. First Thessalonians 4 starting at verse 12. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we that are alive, that are left, shall together with them be caught up in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next items will be a tribute in song by Leah and Stephanie Abrams, nieces, and then the rem remembrance by Dr. Sandra Swaby and Caroline Mafood. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. We will be singing Aretha Franklin's Say a Little Prayer, which was Auntie Susie's favorite song. And we encourage all of you to join along with us, because we might need the help. <laughs> but also, I know that you all know the song, so please sing along. Before I put on my makeup, makeup. I say a little bit 
Caroline. We think God was smiling when he made Suzanne. He was chuckling to himself and saying, this one is going to spread joy and laughter wherever she goes. Then he broke the mold. And the gift we all got was our dear Suzanne, who was so special to all of us. We got the gift of the joy, gratitude, and sincerity that she lavished on all those she met. Suzanne was born on October 23, 1961, to Eugene and Greta Folks, née Anderson. She was the third of five talented children, following her older sister, Sharon and Michelle, and preceding her brother, Anthony, and her baby sister, Karen, or KK, as she was affectionately called, who predeceased her. Just a year apart, Michelle and Suzanne shared a bedroom as children, and according to Michelle, Suzanne, who was always very neat, and still was, and organized would cry because Michelle would not live up to her high standards when it came to keeping the room clean. Nevertheless, they were very close, and as Michelle herself put it, Susie was not just my sister, she was my best friend. Her sister Sharon said Susan was a top student who was very disciplined. During their days at Immaculate Prep School, Susie was always the first to get ready in the mornings and was very upset when she had to wait for her sisters. Yes, I heard the story. Sitting in the back of the car waiting on Sharon to come. <laughs> now, we're not quite sure why she was always in a hurry to get to school. 
because her mom said at one point, Suzanne refused to do any schoolwork. When all of her teacher's efforts failed to get Suzanne to conform, her mother stepped in, threatened to spank her, and the next day her teacher reported that Suzanne was the first to finish all her work. Yes, Suzanne and I are afraid of punishment. Suzanne must have been absolutely bored by the level of work being taught, but when she realized that the consequences were getting a bit stiff, she did what she needed to do, and she remained a top student after that. Now, there was a momentary lapse in her scholastic performance when her family migrated to Canada in the 1970s, when having fun and partying replaced academics as her top priority. And Suzanne had no plans to go to college this time. This time it was her father who intervened. And he literally put her in the car, and she tells us this story, put her in the car, drove her to York University, registered her for a BA in economics, and well, the rest is history. Suzanne graduated with honors and read for a law degree at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill, where she graduated with honors, and finally she pursued a BCL, a postgraduate law degree at Oxford University, where once again, she earned honors and was top student in her college, Wadham. From there, she launched into her lifelong immersion in the field of law, particularly as an academic discipline after a short stint at Doncox. She really wasn't good at making money. Uh, sh she was a brilliant academic who eventually became a leading expert on corporate law in the Caribbean, authoring critically acclaimed publications on the topic. In fact, she was working on a second edition of one of her books with Justice Andrew Burgess, judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice at the time of her passing. You see, Susan had a remarkable talent. Oh, did I skip there? I skipped a page. Yes, I did. She lectured in law for more than 30 years, first at Cave Hill in Barbados and then at Mona Law in Jamaica. By all accounts, Suzanne was not only an outstanding lecturer, but a strong supporter of her students. Always eager to help, she had an open door policy at work and did her best to provide all the resources her students needed to excel. Part of Suzanne's legacy is the fact that most of the attorneys under 50 years of age who are practicing law in Jamaica today were taught by her. Her profound impact on the lives and careers of countless legal practitioners was underscored by the overwhelming tributes from current and former students that have poured out on traditional and social media. You can't say you were taught corporate law if you weren't taught by Mrs. Folks Golson, one student posted. Every time I saw her, she shared her wisdom. Grateful I knew her, another student shared. What stood out most about her as a lecturer was how she made her students feel. Her spirit calmed me, a past student recalled. She was such a light, she made us feel like we mattered, another one stated. Harold Malcolm, a former student and later colleague, summarized her impact perfectly when he said, and I paraphrase, my heart is truly broken. Never have I loved a professor's humility, style, grace, and brilliance all at once. She was so kind and thoughtful, and the way she taught law made it come alive for me. She was by far my favorite teacher. While she was my professor, I dare say, she was also my friend. You see, Susan had a remarkable talent for making everyone she met feel special. Whether it was the security guards at the Mona Dam, the backpackers at Lo Shusan Supermarket, who she knew by name, or her students, colleagues, friends, family, all were treated with genuine respect. Throughout her life, she built deep and meaningful relationships with so many people, and while she had a gift for making everyone feel special, her family was truly the beat of her heart. She treated her parents with love, honor, and respect, 
caring for them with gentleness and dedication. She was a big support of her siblings, Sharon, the big sister, the trailblazer, Michelle, who was practically her fraternal twin, and remained a lifelong best friend, Anthony, her beloved little brother, who shared her sense of humor and drama, and whose advice to others was often, call Suzanne, because she knows everything about everything. <laughs> and of course, Karen, known to all of us as KK, her precious little sister, who Suzanne adored. The love, values, nurturing, discipline, and empowerment from her family, no doubt, prepared her for our marriage and motherhood. The love of her life, was one Mr. Peter Golson. They were devoted to each other, and in recounting their courtship, he said, I had returned to the Mona campus from Barbados for my first year at Norman Manley Law School. Suzanne had come to Mona for her first year at the Faculty of Law after completing her first degree in Canada. We first met when I was an advocate in a moot and she a newcomer. We spoke and discovered that our fathers had worked together at Industrial Development Corporation under Bob Lightburn. What did you remember? I remember her curly black hair and short, short, shorts. <laughs> Years later, when Suzanne returned to Jamaica to attend Norman Manley Law School, they reconnected and their love blossomed. By this point, Peter had become a Christian, and he helped Susan on this path as well. If the love and admiration in his eyes at her baptism didn't foretell romance, then the way he gently removed the lint from her hair that afternoon was a dead giveaway. <laughs> what was special about their relationship was that they enjoyed each other's company so much. They were constantly on the phone. I'd be in the car and she'd be always calling Peter. They were partners in life and law. They spoke multiple times a day and truly were best friends. They got each other. She loved his dry sense of humor and he loved her vivacious, bubbly personality and dramatic storytelling. Peter and Suzanne opened their home to so, many to so many entertaining family, friends, and colleagues. She was the consummate host. Whether it was Christmas dinner for the elderly at church, monthly meetings for our family Bible discussion group, or the annual Rhodes New Year's Eve open house, every occasion felt like a celebration with all the laughter and happiness. Peter and Suzanne excelled at their careers, counseled other couples, and mentored countless youngsters and others who were, like myself, not so young, and parenthood was a unifying adventure for them. Suzanne's boys meant the world to her. An indelible memory was the sight of this petite lady who carried her eldest son, Alex, on her hip everywhere she went. I don't think she thought it was possible to love another child the way she loved Alex. Seeing Alex, travel all over Europe for work this summer, filled her heart with joy. He always had her back. Yes, he has lifted her on many occasions. I've been there. And they could read each other with a look. Peter John's love of service and concern for the less fortunate meant so much to her. And David's maturity and convictions at such a young age were a testimony to the mother she was to him. Her primary concern as she faced her latest health challenges was wanting to make sure that her boys would be taken care of. She would be so proud of how they ra have rallied to support Peter and to cope with her loss. And speaking of care for the boys, it is impossible to think of the Goldson family without Myrna. Suzanne's cherished cousin, who was a bedrock of support throughout her adult life. Myrna was a second mom to Alex, Peter, John, and David, holding the fort when Suzanne and Peter traveled and ensuring that the boys were well fed, got to school, and did their homework. When Suzanne faced her health challenges, Myrna was there through it all, always by her side, 
quietly providing the support Suzanne needed. She truly demonstrated the loyalty exemplified by the biblical character Ruth who said, where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Myrna, thank you for all you did for Suze. With all the love Suzanne lavished on her immediate family, she still had plenty of love and affection to lavish on her wider family, on those she adopted, and on her extensive tribe of loving, loyal friends. She had a special bond with her sister-in-law, Paula. She loved and respected her many aunts, including her Aunt Rose, who is here today, and her great aunt, Yvonne, who was precious to her and is also here today. She loved her nieces, Leah, Stephanie, Giselle, and Abby, who were the daughters she never had. Her cousins were a part of a special posse who laughed together and recounted family stories. Suzanne was so relatable and unpretentious that her friends' children felt like they were her own children. Among her daughters was Shari, the daughter of Susie St. John, one of her best friends from Barbados. Shari has been a tremendous support to Suzanne and the family, and on behalf of Peter and the boys, we thank you, Shari, for coming over daily to ensure that they are okay and for being a constant source of encouragement for them. Her girls also included Rebecca Mafood, her go-to makeup artist, Catherine and Elizabeth Swaby, Lauren Magoo, Regina Wong, Gabrielle Pierre, and Brittany Watson. They could tell her things they couldn't share with their parents, and they trusted her to keep their confidence and provide practical, wise, and spiritual advice. Suzanne became a Christian in 1992, and from that day on, she gave herself to God, rendering multifaceted service with her special brand of joy and enthusiasm. It was never about being out of the pious or religious, but about her personal daily walk with the Lord. She strove to be inwardly renewed daily and to live a life of purpose. She studied the Bible with countless women and continued to walk with them and counsel them to help foster their spiritual growth. Among those she invited to church and who are mentored by her is Marlene Nemard Parker, who said, I can only simply say without exaggeration that God used Suzanne to save my life. When she came to Barbados for a meeting and shared her faith with me in the law library at the Cave Hill campus in 1997, because she spoke so powerfully, I became a Christian and now have a life in Christ. Suzanne had other Christian women with, women with whom she walked closely, including Claudette Magoo, Ingrid Mackay, Camille Taylor, Dana Azalina, and Bernetta Quintina. Despite all her health challenges, work, and travel pressures, she made time to help them draw closer to God. Many of the persons she shared her faith with or counseled and encouraged over the years have flown in here to join us for this celebration of her life. It means so much to Peter, her boys, and the rest of her family that you made the trip to support them during this time. Suzanne loved connecting with all her sisters in Christ all over the world. On her annual trips to London, it was a must that she spent time with Nadine Sinclair Walters, Sylvia Hall Jones, and Yinka Williams. If she went to Canada, she would connect with Andrea Watson and her family and with Sheila Moyston. If she was in Barbados, she had to link up with Margaret Skeet and her namesake, Susie St. John. She had the great gift of being able to maintain and nurture friendships which started years even decades ago, as evident by her special friendship with our Canadian friends, Alida and Rose. One of the last occasions on which we, the women in her church family group, met together was in August. Suzanne shared a lesson entitled, One Day at a Time. She opened up about her new health challenges and the lessons she was learning about trusting God. She shared Psalm 68, verse 19, which says, Praise be to the Lord, to the God of our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. She was always thankful for each day she was given. When I would complain, she would say, Sandy, at least we get to do this. At least we're well enough to do this. 
Okay, okay, I tried. She knew she would be with the Lord one day, but was so grateful for the time she was given to see her boys grow up, to share an amazing love, to share an amazing love with our dear husband Peter, her best friend, and to build fond memories with our mom and siblings. This was reinforced every time she made plans, as she would add the proviso, God willing. In everything, her sense of humor was unmatched. As her friends, we are convinced she gained many extra years of life because she was hysterically funny, and more importantly, she could laugh at herself. She was a consummate storyteller, acting out each aspect of her tales to illustrate the drama or the hilarity. So she'd, she'd pose as the... So you said that and that? Well, my dear. So... <laughs> Her stories had us all in stitches, and although she always took the longest route to the main point and then said, well, to cut the story short, <laughs> you couldn't complain when you were so busy laughing. Susan exuded style and always looked hot. She was our diva, who was always stunning, thanks to Peter's shopping skills. <laughs> A friend once joked that she probably wore designer diapers as a baby. Her jovial response was, I didn't, but KK was another story. <laughs> she absolutely loved the play dates, the birthday celebrations, and every other occasion they shared. The moms have been by David's side since Suzanne's passing. When Cora Ann asked if there was anything she could do, if there was anything she could do, and we said, just keep doing what you're doing for David. Her response was, we have him. Those three words would mean so much to Suze. One of the special times we had was her surprise 60th birthday celebration, which we hosted on Zoom during the pandemic. Family and friends from all over the world logged on to mark her special day. You all right? <laughs> We, I'm wiping sweat, she's wiping tears. <laughs> you know, at that time, at our 60th birthday, I'm glad we did it. We had the opportunity to express our love to her, to honor her, and to let her know how much she meant to each one of us. We are so grateful, so grateful that we had the chance to thank her for the love she showed to us all over the years. Many of our family and friends are here today or watching virtually, a testimony to the love so many had for her. In 1 John 4, 16, the Bible says, God is love. And if we keep on loving others, we will stay one in our hearts with God, and he will stay with us. This is a summation of Suzanne's life. Her passing was her transition to be with our Lord the Savior, which means this occasion is a cause for celebration. In closing, we would like to share a poem that was written by Camille Taylor, entitled, Celebrating Suzanne. With gratitude, laughter, joy, and love, we celebrate Suzanne. We have treasured years of fond memories from her impactful lifespan. The beauty, the glamour, and that attitude, all in resplendent display. Yet it's the sister, the daughter, the mother, the wife, and friend we celebrate today. It is the undying spirit, the joyful spunk, and the wicked sense of humor too. It's the friendship, support, the laughter, and the love that will ring forever true. So with gratitude in our hearts, we honor her today. Survivor, fighter, our venerable friend, we salute you always. I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> now, let the record show on every page. Declare it throughout the land. For now and forever, we celebrate Suzanne. Suzanne, SFG, Susie Woozy, Susie Q, Q, you'll always be in our heart. We'll love you forever. Rest in peace, my friend. That was amazing. 
we're going to give a tribute in song. It's a hymn called, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, How Excellent, coming from Psalm 8, verse 1 and 3, and it is one of Susan's favorite hymns. time we're going to take up an, uh, an offering for the uh, Hope Worldwide Jamaica. Please be generous. I'm going to ask the singers to lead us in this song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Yeah. 
let's pray for the offering that has been given. Dear Lord, Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you've provided for us that enables us to be generous on this occasion. We ask that you guide those who administer this gift in a way that can benefit the poor in this land. We ask, Lord, that our generosity will continue on the streets and wherever we go, that we will continue to know and practice the gift of giving, that we will uh, enjoy giving, and that we will make a difference in the lives of those who we come in contact with. We pray for your blessing upon this gift. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, we'll hear a message from God's Word delivered by Dr. Peter Swaby, elder at the Kingston Church of Christ. Thanks, Ray. My condolences to the Golson and Folks families, and to Peter, Alex, Peter John, and David. You've had the good fortune to have had Suzanne as a best friend and mother on a daily basis in your lives. Peter and Suzanne have been our best friends for over 30 years. And we decided long ago that we wanted to walk through life together. We wanted them close to us and with our family throughout our lives. And what impressed me most about Suzanne was her genuine love and thoughtfulness her zest for life, and the way she could describe the events of a story with precision, insight, and humor. I'd often look across at Peter and go, where did you find her? And he'd look back at me and go. As a medical doctor, one of the things that I'm acutely aware of, and that you will be too, is that life is fragile. Sickness, tragedy, and death show up unexpectedly and at inopportune times. Although these can affect us negatively and cause anxiety and make us pull into a shell and even question God's goodness, they should not define us, limit us, or prevent us from living our best life. In James 4, verse 13, it says, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we'll go uh, to this or that city, spend a year here, carry on business, and make money. Why you do not know, even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. For many, life is about accomplishment, acquisition, and achieving security. This life is like a mist in the grand plan of eternity. It is important to understand the purpose God has created us for and to live in harmony with His will. The prayer of Moses in Psalm 90, verse 12, is very simple. And this phrase stood out to me. It says, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Many of us would like to measure our life in decades and quarter centuries. But really, our life is measured in days. Our life is short. Our days are few. Even if we live 60, 80, or 100 years, it's still a brief existence. What is God's desire for us? This calls for understanding and wisdom. Live well. That's what uh, Suzanne was known for. She lived well. She made the most of every day. Each one of us has been fashioned and created according to God's purpose. God has given each of us unique abilities and attributes to be used to benefit others. And we saw all the wonderful attributes that Suzanne was given. In Romans 13, 
verse 8. It says, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Suzanne didn't only study law, she fulfilled the law. Suzanne mastered the art of using her abilities and attributes to love people and see the best in them. You know, when Sandy and I would have, we'd be pulling out our hair with our, our children, she would remind us when we were frustrated and at different times, you know, uh, at raising our kids, how great they were and how, you know, endearing, their endearing qualities. You could never hear anything to back up our story. It would always, but they're so nice. They're really good children. Give them a little time. Of course, that made her the favorite auntie of all the children in her circle. She remembered all the birthdays and kept up with all the best latest music and clothing trends. And of course, she was the provider of much clothing too. She spent time with all the nieces and the nephews and owned her house up for all the graduations and baby showers because as far as they were con she was concerned, they were her children. Her best use of time was to love up on somebody and make them feel special. Hosting innumerable teas, birthdays, and Bible studies at our home, she used everything she had to honor God and live well. She lived wisely. She decided to do it today. We often go through each day reacting and dealing with things as they come up. We, we feel like we'll have time, opportunities to spend time with our family, friends, and those we love at some later time. Other opportunities to say what needs to be said or express how we feel. When Suzanne was diagnosed with cancer some 13 years ago, she expressed that she felt like her life had ended. Her dreams and hopes and desires to see her boys graduate, marry one day, and have grandkids gone. She reminded me later what I said to her then. Live one day at a time. You know, none of us knows when our time will come. No one of us. Whether if we have a diagnosis of cancer or not. None of us knows when we are, how long we have. That's not for us to concern ourselves with. In Matthew 6, verse 31, it says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Suzanne became laser-focused in maximizing her day, doing what was right by her family and Peter, spending time with each of them, uh, each of them at every opportunity, and teaching them to enjoy life too. She would make every opportunity to be at Peter's side. She went out of her way to spend time with the boys, her mother, her family, and her friends. Every day was an opportunity to spend time with somebody and do something special. Sometime later, I told Suzanne that I thought she had lived her best life since her diagnosis of cancer. She reconciled relationships quickly. She made sure she expressed lo her love and appreciation to everyone in her daily life. 
nothing was left undone or unsaid. Susan mastered living well and living life wisely. Look at your life. Is there a relationship that you need to reconcile? Is there something that you need to put right in your life? Do you need to start serving God? Do it today. Live life well. Live life wisely. Don't be afraid your life will end. Be afraid that it will never begin. Thank you. Thank you for those very wise words. Before the closing, I'd like to do the committal. And I'd like to remind everyone of Jesus' words to Martha, the sister of Lazarus. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And he asked her a question, do you believe this? We are here today to celebrate because we believe this, that whoever believes in Christ will never die. They will continue to live even though they die. The body is a temporary vessel for all souls. For as much as it has pleased our Father in his wise providence to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our sister Susan Goldson, her body has been committed to cremation to be returned to dust, for we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus will change our mortal bodies to be like his, his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from among the dead. So we commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise her to new life on the last day. Let us go to God in prayer for Susan's family. Dear Lord, Father in heaven, we know, Lord, that even as Martha and Mary believed in Jesus, they grieved the loss of their brother. We know that even when Jesus knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, he wept at the tomb. So we know, Lord, even with your promises, there is still loss and grief today, especially with Susan's family, the Folks family and the Golson family. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them today. Remind them that they are not alone. You are familiar with loss. You are familiar with grief. Jesus wept. You gather our tears in a bottle. And Father, you watched as your son died on the cross for our sins. So we know, Lord, that you are with us and you've not left us alone. And you've not left the Goldson family and the Folks family alone. You are with them in spirit. Continue to make Susan's legacy live on in them. Comfort them with the memory of the joy that she gave to others. And I pray that the joy that she exuded and imparted to others would be theirs today. I pray all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. We are about to have the recessional hymn, but the, oh, I'm reminded of, I left my program in my seat. Thank you very much. There is the song of praise that we need to do. So I'm ahead of myself. Then I'll do the benediction and then we'll have the recessional. Thank you. Please be stand. Thank you. And we'll sing. The song of praise is going to be How Great Is Our God.
glory and majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and he trembles at his voice, he trembles at his voice. Our great is our God, sing with me our great is our God, and all who see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. family has asked me to express their appreciation to everyone who is here for your love, your prayers, and your presence. You've made it much easier for them, but they are asking for some quiet time after the service, but continue to please keep them in your prayers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. At the, during the recessional song, I'm going to ask you to wait in prayer until I have taken the urn to the family and the clergy and family have made their way outside and then everybody else can make their way behind the family and we'll do that on the fourth stanza of the next song. Check. 
सकता है
Jah is my guide from the pestilence of darkness. So whom shall I fear? He's my shield from the vampires of hell. So whom shall I be afraid?
Thank you.